Good afternoon. This is Love for the Truth put on by the Davison Church of Christ. We are located in Davison right on Lapeer Road next to Lucky's Steakhouse. Uh, and we would love to have any visitors uh, come and worship with us and learn from God's Word and worship Him together with us. Uh, we have a, a DVD also that we're advertising on here that we'd like to give you for free. If you'd like to learn about God's plan for saving man, we have a DVD titled just exactly that, and there are some lessons about what man must do to receive salvation and, and what is it on our part. So if you if you are interested in further study on what do you need to do to get to heaven, uh, we have some lessons that we'd like to show you. So let's go ahead and get into our topic for today, for this short lesson. The title of it is a question, and I've titled it, Follow Your Heart. In this lesson, I, I really, I want, I want to talk about the worst piece of advice that someone could give you. Someone, you know, some of us have probably been told this before. You hear this advice a lot in movies that we see and books you read, maybe television shows. And the world loves that phrase, follow your heart. And it seems to be the go-to piece of advice out there today, right? When all else fails... You listen to the feeling inside your heart and you can't go wrong. How many of you have heard that advice? I know I have. You know, when you're about to make that big decision in your life, you're about to buy a brand new car, maybe a new home, you're about to accept some new job, listen to your heart. Right? That's what the world tells us. When you're about to pick the right one to marry, what does everybody tell you? Follow your heart. Listen to whatever your heart tells you to do. And even when you decide what church you want to become a, car, a part of, again, the world's counsel is the same. Listen to your heart. And on and on the list could go. You know, if someone is out there having marriage struggles and uh, they're thinking about separating from their partners, the world's counsel is the same. Hey, if your heart tells you to do it, you do it. You follow your heart. That's the world's counsel. The world, you see, assumes that the heart and man's feelings is a good lead for your life. And when all else fails, you go where your heart takes you. And you know what? That sounds good. That sounds like it would be the right advice. And maybe even it might sound romantic at times and appealing. But I'm here to teach you in this short lesson that this advice to follow your heart is one of the most destructive pieces of advice that Satan has ever come, come up with. And the world is so deceived by it, especially Americans. So in this lesson, I want to talk about what the Bible says on this subject, about listening to your heart. And we're going to look at what God has to say about man following his own heart. And uh, I want to talk about some reasons why. Reasons why you should not follow your heart. Reason number one, and this might be the only one we get through today, the human heart is deceptive. You can deceive yourself based on your heart in so many ways. Your heart, you see, and what you feel inside you can lead you into believing a lie, right? Because it's what you felt in your heart. Your heart can lead you into breaking God's laws. Your heart can lead you into performing some unbelievably wicked acts against mankind because it's what you felt in your heart. Certainly your heart can lead you down the wrong path. It can really be the worst thing in this life to follow and to listen to is your own emotions and in your own thoughts. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right, the Bible here describes the heart as deceitful above all things. So the Bible says that my own heart can deceive me. That's absolutely right. You know, so many times people measure truth and what's right and what's wrong based off of what they feel in their heart alone. You know, my heart's telling me this, therefore it must be right. Or it must be true because I have that feeling. My heart tells me that I love my coworker more than my wife, therefore I better b pursue it. Is that right? 
you know, I, I feel in my heart that I've been saved, therefore I must be saved. Is that always true? Some people say, you know, I know that I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because of what I felt years ago. I'll never go against what I felt in my heart. And you can't tell me that I'm not saved because I know what I felt. But you see, this is the wrong thinking, my friends. What do we learn from the Bible? Be careful because your heart can deceive you in so many ways. Following your heart can lead you down the absolute wrong path. Can I give you two quick Bible examples of people who felt something with all their heart, right? That their emotions and everything inside them told them that something was right, but it was entirely wrong or untrue. First, I want to talk about Jacob in the Old Testament. You remember Jacob? For 24 years, Jacob believed with all of his heart that his son Joseph was dead, right? That he had been killed by a wild beast. Do you remember that story? But the truth was, actually just the opposite, that Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph had been killed, attacked by a wild animal. And so for 24 years of Jacob's life, he believed something that was not true. Even though he felt it in his heart that Joseph was dead, Even though his heart told him that that was the truth, this is right, my son is dead, it still was not the truth no matter what he felt in his heart. Do you understand? Listening to your heart is not the standard for measuring truth. Your heart can be wrong, and we have to understand our place. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23 says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself, It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. You see, sometimes I think that we have convinced ourselves that we are capable of directing our our own steps. The Bible says we're not. You see, sometimes we, we depend so heavily upon the feeling that we have in our heart to direct us with what we think is right, but, but we neglect God's word. You see, the Bible says that the way of man is not in man himself, but it's in God. Right? It's in God's counsel and in God's things. Right, So you know, the feeling in your heart can be so strong, but it can be so wrong. Remember that. Secondly, let's talk about Paul in the New Testament before he became a Christian. Paul, before he was converted and he decided to follow Jesus Christ, he felt with all of his heart that he was doing the right thing, wasn't he? When he was persecuting Christians... His heart told him that was right. And he was listening to his heart and doing what he thought was right. Acts chapter 23 and verse 1, Paul said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying my whole life, I have always had a clear conscience in all of my actions before God. My conscience has always been clear. So when he was throwing Christians into prison, before he was converted, when he was beating Christians, having them killed, consenting to their, to their deaths, Paul had a clear conscience. Do you remember what Jesus said in uh, John chapter 16 and verse 2? He said, yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. You see, that's exactly what the apostle Paul thought before he was converted to Christianity. He thought that he was offering the God of heaven service by killing these Christians. He felt it in his heart that he was doing what was right. He followed that because his heart told him that that was the right thing to do. But you see, we understand that that couldn't have been more wrong, the things that he was doing. So you see, Paul's heart deceived him. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I I ask you the question in this lesson. Are you caught up... In emotionalism in this life. You know, all these preachers out there always say, you know, you just listen to what your heart tells you to do. Well, I'm telling you the true advice. Don't listen to your heart. Right? The, the first reason that following your heart is a bad idea is because the heart is deceptive. Your heart can lead you down the wrong path. Can you think of any more Bible characters who listened to their heart and it led them down a terrible path? What about Cain? Back in Genesis chapter 4, his heart led him to kill his brother, Abel. 
because he felt with his heart jealousy. That, that, that's what his heart was telling him. I'm jealous. I hate my brother. Therefore, I want to kill him. What did Cain do? He listened to his heart. You see, the right thing to do would have not to have been to listen to his heart. And then he would have been in the right. What about uh, in, also in Genesis, Joseph's brothers in Genesis 37? They were jealous. They, they listened to the feeling that they had in their heart to tell them what to do. And so th- what did they do? They threw their brother in a pit and, th- and sold him into slavery. That's what they felt was the right thing to do. And they, they thought that was good in their hearts. What about uh, David in the Old Testament? David's heart led him down the wrong path. He listened to his heart and he went into some terrible sin with Bathsheba. 2 Samuel chapter 11. He followed what he felt in his heart and he pursued it. I ask you, how did that work out for him? David's life was never the same after that. You know, I, I, he, he was reconciled back to God, but things just were not as great at the, as they had been before. We could consider his son Solomon who had his heart persuaded by his wives to turn away from the Lord. Right? So they changed the, uh, the mind of Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 3 through 6, talks about Solomon. and says, And his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidon, Sidonians, and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites, right? All these false gods. And verse 6 says, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord as did his father David. What do we see here with this example? Solomon was persuaded by his many wives and he followed what his heart was telling him to do, and he was tempted by his desire for these foreign women, and it cost him. You know, and listen, by the way, to God's warning to Solomon beforehand, before all of this, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. It says, But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these, the text says, clung to these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. You see, Solomon, Solomon thought... Uh, that he would follow his heart because he thought that that would be the right thing to do and he went down a terrible path. The point I'm getting at in this lesson is that you might feel something in your heart that this is right or this is wrong and that this is what I should do religiously or this is how I need to be saved because that's what I feel in my heart. Therefore, it can't be wrong. My friends, that's not the right guide. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Right? You, you, you can't do it. You are not capable. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. My encouragement for this short lesson is stop listening to your heart. Do not continue listening to the counsel that you feel in your heart if it does not line up with God's word. What we need to do is shape our conscience, shape what we do feel in our hearts, to match God's word. Conform ourselves to the will of Christ and don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and do the things that Christ would like you to do. So that's my advice and my Bible lesson for this afternoon. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. If you need to call the Davison Church of Christ, it's 810-652-0706. That's 810-652-0706. Thank you and have a great day.